There you go. Okay. Hey, everyone. This is Ian Carlin from the Empty Cup Podcast and Ronin JKD channel here on YouTube. I want to thank uh, Gregor Strockel for joining us today. He actually did a, 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 an awesome private lesson with me and another friend of mine. That's the guy behind the camera right there. Yeah. Uh, hey, behind the, <laughs> behind the camera guy. <laughs> yeah. So I uh, wanted to ask you a few questions. Sure. And the first question that I want to ask you is one of the questions that I know everybody on this channel, because everybody on this channel is from Ronan JKD, but they all know that I'm heavy into jujitsu as well. And I've talked before with you on the podcast a little bit about uh, the, um, and he's a 10th planet uh, jujitsu guy, brown belt, 10th planet jujitsu. Uh, but he also has a very strong background in Wing Chun. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about, is there anything that, that you still use from Wing Chun, mm -hmm. or have you totally abandoned it, or is there things that you use in, in, in rolling? Um, Absolutely, yeah, no, so there's definitely a carryover, right? Now, obviously, as any other art, you have to, you have to look at the, the principle behind it, not so much as the technique, right? And so what I mean by that is, uh, if I look at Shisao or Sticky Hands or any of that, the, there's a couple ideas that transcend a lot of martial arts, which is the straight line or direct line, right? The, the, the shortest path between the two points, and then never fight force with force, right? So that's where a lot of Lap Sao comes from, a lot of, you know, uh, I forget some of the names, when you turn, Tang Sao, Bong Sao is the same thing, right? And so, and I'm, didn't, I didn't, I still do it in my mind, but I wanted to do it justice, obviously, but it couldn't turn my lower body with it, but I'm just saying, so. I think you'll understand. Yeah, so, so you guys get the, get the idea. So it's not fighting force with force, it's forcing with it, right? Or turning yeah. and then coming back. Um, so, so those are the principles that, that are really quintessential in jiu-jitsu. So just to give you some practical examples um, where I use them, like it goes from wrestling, it goes to jiu-jitsu, it goes anywhere, right? And so it's anywhere I encounter tension. So um, where I could do that, like um, for the sake of, because our private was around the uh, rubber guard, um, so if I do a quick rubber guard break down here, let's just say I got to here, it doesn't really matter how I got here, and now let's just say I pull this over um, for, you know, if I do it correctly, boom. Okay, so now he really from here has a couple of different options, right? One is he can come, he can go away from me. If he goes away from me, right, by pulling out, I go to him a plata, okay? But other people, for example, will come back into me, right? which now I go to Google Plata, okay? And we did this very loosely, but the main principle here is, uh, once I lock this up, okay, if he goes away, I follow, I don't fight. If he comes into me, I have something ready for him as well. Does it make sense? Yeah. So, so it's kind of fighting force with force, like an uh, example wrestling equivalent of this would be, let's just say we post here, and he's just holding super tight on this, right? And he's just pushing into me, it's super tight. Now I can fight force with force, and just, or just, just get a lot of tension, or I can I can load him, and I can chug him up. And I'm not a good wrestler, but that's just an idea, right? So I didn't fight it, I went with it, okay? Or, for example, if, let's just say the guy sometimes, we're stepping here, he's hiding the legs away, and I'm just like, I can't really, doing it, right? And he's just loading me and super tight pulling me down, right? Instead of me trying to fight this, I come on, so it's the same thing. Now, where this works better in jiu-jitsu for a better example, like, go to your side for me. Go to my side? No, just, uh, okay. okay, back to side. So, um, let's just say I'm in classical side control, right? And uh, what typically happens is the guy's trying to frame me, right? And as he frames me right here, uh, in the throat, right? He's looking for either an underhook or to regain guard, right? And come back. So, if I'm if I were if I'm fighting force with force, I'm gonna fight uh, put all my weight back on my own throat, which is idiotic, right? Yeah, right? So what I can do from here, for example, and this is there's different reactions, but it just gives you an idea. So I create some tension here, and then I go whack. Okay, which is very simple. Just go with it where the force is going. Now I have a mm -hmm. wrist lock here. I have, I could go for Dars, um, you know, I can, I can run around and do the gift wrap. It's, I can do a ton of different things. I can go here, for the back, I can do a lot of different things. But the idea is you're, you're not fighting force with force. And probably one of the easiest way to demonstrate this is like from old school 90s MMA. This gives you some different ideas and looks. Go there to your back again. Perfect. Okay. So. 
let's just say I'm in a modified scar folder like here judo side or case like a Tommy um, so when I'm here um, you know I can I can punch a person they cover up and I can start attacking things right now this is a very basic attack that nobody's been tapped with in a long long time um, just simply because it, it, it it's not set up properly there's a lot of people have gotten really good at jiu-jitsu and so but but that was like old so what I do is now instead of him framing I'll steal this okay and now what I'm gonna start doing is I'm gonna pop him a couple times right and he starts defending right as he defends this I pull it across jam it with my body come here okay the other one I could sometimes do he's framing me I go judo side cover cover you do this lock cover start going here okay so now I just took that hand away okay as I go here and this is really where I wanted to go so it's kind of um, you know the guy is trying to get an underhook he's fighting me fighting me boom I steal it and I go right here okay this would be one of the ideas now from here I grab my own ear switch the side start punching him now he's gonna cover with right what? yeah with the top hand usually okay as he covers with the top hand now I go get it okay so that's an idea versus if I just try to go here and this could totally work I'm not saying it doesn't I'm just I'm very dumbing this down just for a principle right I can do this but he can fight me he can switch the elbow pull it in and now I'm fighting for it right versus when I catch this underhook which is a classic jiu-jitsu control I'm right here I just grab my own ear now can you free that hand nope can't free it so pop pop he covers now I catch it does it make sense yeah okay or now let's just say we'll just go straight jiu-jitsu let's just say I'm locking this up and I'm, I'm not very good and he puts this in pulls the elbow in Okay, and now I'm fighting this, I just lost it, right? Well, now I go here, jam it with my body, do a little gift wrap. Doesn't really matter how I come across now, I can hop it, I could go slide to slide, whatever. Feed this a two on one. So now, here would be another example. Like, what would be your kind of defense against here? Well, I want to start. Yeah, he wants to turn into me, right? Like... So now, if he's turning into me, I have two options I can do. I can do the classic which is I'm gonna fight you Ugh, you turn into me or if he turns into me oh, that's cool I'm gonna let him and I do head and arm or the other reaction is to roll away from me right well now if I did it like a strength style he tries to roll away from me and I'm like get over here and we end up in this okay he wants to roll that's cool I'll load him with my knee in here and now what are you gonna you're not gonna go belly down right so now I'm gonna load him and take him to this side, right? right? And so now he might want to fight my hands. He fights my hands. Wham! I could I could fight his hands and we could get into this battle here, or I can kill the wrist. Boom! Use my foot to cover it. Do other things, right? So just an idea. So let me also say that I learned something today in a way that Wing Chun has served me. But what I learned was is that it only serves me with people who don't know very much. So if it's like if I'm going against like a blue belt or even sometimes a purple belt, it worked. But you go against a brown belt and it doesn't work. And let me tell you what I'm talking about because this is what he caught me with and he showed me with. So I was in his guard and, you know, I'm he tries to grab me or whatever to break down my guard. And I got chi sao, right? So I can kind of control his hands pretty good because I've done a lot of chi sao. Now the problem that I did, and this is great because like if it's a blue belt, brown belt, or not, I mean blue belt, purple belt even, you know, like I can, I can hold him off for a long time. But what happens is, is he starts, I start giving uh, was, up my I remember posture. What talking about. It was Z, right? So yeah. Well, I start giving up my posture. Well, yeah, it yeah. starts falling over. I right? start falling over. Which See, then I'm, led to, which we did in class, which went to the, well, to the rubber band. And the whole point is, is, is that I'm, I'm, I'm fighting for the hands but I'm leaning over fighting for these hands. Right. And, uh, and I want him broken down because that's like the basic of what I want to do. And so don't, don't get it. It might, you know, again, it's one of those things that it worked when I was just against somebody who was like a blue belt or white belt or even like maybe a blue belt three or four stripes. 
but against somebody who knows like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm fighting these hands and I'm right, leaning right. forward and I'm fighting the hands and I'm doing really well. See, he's not grabbing me. I know cheese out and then pop and boom. Yeah, and I'm and we're here, right? And so, so be careful of that. Don't so do that. The One of the ideas though, the straight line, right? So instead of him fighting hands, right? Because he's in a straight line. Yeah. What's the one part that doesn't move is my center line, right? So if I grab his hand here, or here, my shoulder is roughly in the same space. Mm -hmm. So Jiu-Jitsu 101, what will they teach you? They'll teach you, so um, they'll teach you to control either right here, mm -hmm. or even some people, depending on preference, will put the thumb in right there. Because that's the part you really want to address, yeah. mm -hmm. not this, right? So it's just kind of, so it's not, it's connected to Wing Chun in the, uh, the idea right. that I'm battling circular motion with a straight line. Yeah. So. Well, well, that can be, it can also be like, you know, where Wing Chun can fail you. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because it's just like, it's not the same art. Right. And a lot of times, so Lin Wing Chun, like Wing Chun 101 is go for the straight line. You're not supposed to follow the hands, but also at the same time we're doing wrestling. So it's not like I'm trying to get back to the center line to punch you. Right. So right, I'm right, trying right. to grab the hands and I follow the hands and my base just falls over. And I got caught with that so many times today. So yeah. <laughs> thank you. For you got it anytime. Um, Really appreciate you. you got it. And uh, this has been Ian Carlin, the Empty Cup Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and share this with your friends. Thank you. Please.